Okay, here we are looking at the um, uh, the baggage cargo area and waterworks area of the 2011 uh, Keystone 3500 RE. Uh, it's quite a large baggage area, uh, and uh, what I want to do is show you some of the uh, areas that have been a problem uh, with this baggage area. It has a large uh, bus type doors, but unfortunately whoever put these uh, latches on screwed them down until they completely stripped uh, leaving me with no choice but to, uh, to, to try and glue them on uh, with epoxy glue. Uh, I've uh, spoken with a, uh, a Keystone dealer in Columbus, Ohio who said that uh, Keystone told them that may have voided my warranty. Uh, that I should have, I guess, driven home with them opened, uh, or perhaps uh, taped shut. <clears throat> uh, at the time that I glued these on, I was in Florida, so I'm going to check with the Department of Transportation of each state between Florida and Ohio and uh, get their opinions uh, in writing as to uh, whether these latches should have been uh, ignored and the baggage is taped. You'll notice a vertical piece here. This is the underside of the uh, skirt on the right side of the trailer. Uh, a skirt from one of the slides. And <clears throat> that vertical piece is supposed to be up vertical and providing a support, but the screw had actually just completely broken off. So that was another area that uh, I had to, and there's another one that uh, it just it just broke, completely broke off, uh, and therefore the skirts would be flapping in the wind. Um, and the only way I could repair, because you cannot get up, you can't get up under there with any kind of a tool where you could actually screw it back in. So uh, my only solution was to wrap it with rubber roofing material and epoxy glue and actually glue those back in. Uh, that was the only option. Uh, the other option was, would be to, uh, at, at the time, again, I was in Key West, um, so I was several hours even away from the mainland. Uh, the other option would have uh, been to drive with these things just uh, flapping in the breeze, which um, uh, would not have fulfilled my obligation to mitigate my damages. <clears throat> this is just another view. Uh, this occurred on uh, uh, the slide out uh, skirts on both sides of the trailer. You can see where the uh, screw had just, uh, it, it's basically gone. Uh, it either broke off uh, from too much tension or it broke off because uh, it was screwed down too tight. This is um, uh, one of the slides in the underbelly. The trailer had experienced a hydraulic hose blow off on what they call the opposing slide. Well, there's still quite a bit of stain under there, but my, what really concerns me is how this underbelly is bulging. There's quite a bit of bulge in this underbelly. Here we're looking at the waterworks area, and you can see this vertical piece of molding uh, was just simply falling off. Uh, it was held on by a screw. Whoever put the screw in screwed it in until it just completely stripped and it actually was not even uh, put on evenly. Uh, so again, out comes the epoxy glue and uh, uh, I had to glue it back on. That's just another view where you can see how that piece of molding uh, separates from uh, the wood. This is the inside of the baggage compartment from the other side. You can see in the upper uh, left hand corner where uh, there's some discoloration that's because water uh, every time I would fill the uh, freshwater tank uh, this baggage compartment would also fill with water so I obviously needed to get behind those gray panels that and uh, uh, investigate see if I could figure out what was leaking 
when I opened the gray panels, what I found is the furnace here, you notice these two holes here, uh, they were not tightened. So I was losing a lot of heat out of those. I don't know if those should be tightened and also uh, have some uh, metallic tape put on them since they're not being used, uh, but uh, losing a lot of heat out of there, obviously. Um, and you had the same problem um, with several of the other uh, areas where the ducting is actually hooked up uh, to the furnace. There's uh, pretty substantial gaps, and um, because of those substantial gaps, you know, you're losing heat. Uh, this is an area underneath. <clears throat> There's some uh, wires uh, that all they have is twist. Uh, there, there's twists on them. Uh, I have found some where the twist had come off and the actual wires were twisted. Uh, down here, I'm just a little disappointed with the, the lack of any attention to cleanliness. There's a lot of wire. Uh, that isn't really tied very well uh, or no zip ties at all, crossing over water lines, crossing over areas where there are joints in water lines. And when you have a vehicle like a trailer that's moving, the, you know, this thin wire um, can experience chaffing and you can actually start to lose some insulation because of the chaffing. It happens in aircraft um, uh, as well as in trailers. Uh, we're looking at uh, some of the ducting that, again, is just kind of laid in there. It really isn't tied down. Um, it doesn't appear to me that uh, there's a, a great deal of attention given to organization to it. Um, you know, you have a lot of wires that are just uh, kind of put in haphazardly. Some of it's in conduit, uh, a lot of it is not in conduit, but the concern is where you have this thin wire um, rubbing up against areas of wood or metal uh, that could chaff that uh, thin uh, plastic or rubber coating off of that wire, and then you have a shorting uh, and potential uh, problem and potentially a fire uh, hazard. Um, and here's a, an, an example of wire that's just simply wrapped around a, a piece of uh, uh, piping. This is a, a piece of wastewater piping. Um, and it's right at the joint. You know, so, so if there's going to be a leak on this, and, uh, and certainly chaffing could occur there. Um, this is where a lot of the water um, uh, hoses come to, and unfortunately, when you put that gray panel back up, it actually compresses. It puts compression on these uh, uh, water hoses, and by compressing these water hoses, my concern is that it may be compressing a joint, and that may be uh, one of the reasons that we're uh, getting some leaks, uh, because we do have a leak in the underbelly that we just simply cannot identify. On the right hand side there you can notice um, a piece of stripping, wood stripping that was put there to hold those gray panels up. Uh, you know, screws were just put in until it just split the wood. Uh, what I did, you'll notice a part there that's shiny, that's epoxy glue again. Uh, thank goodness for epoxy. Uh, again, screws put in until it just splits the wood uh, so it was holding nothing. Uh, and for that to pass inspection uh, with, uh, uh, with Keystone is just absolutely, to, to me, it's absolutely mind-blowing. I really thought they had uh, much better quality control. This is another piece of wood. Screw put in till the uh, wood split. Nobody bothered to uh, uh, inspect or be concerned about it. Another piece of wood. Screw put in till the wood split. So, obviously... <laughs> Uh, it's not providing the kind of support that it was designed to, uh, to provide at all. There's another photo. Two areas of a uh, piece of wood that is supposed to provide support. Um, 
um, for some panels. And uh, I also have some concerns about the dents that we're seeing in some of the aluminum frame. Uh, because this is only what we can see and and you know you don't even see this until you take those panels off uh, you know the the unit aesthetically looks very pretty until you look behind the panels but uh, even there's a water pump there sitting uh, to the right of the vacuum cleaner the vacuum cleaner is a red part the water pump is right to the right of it and you got electrical wires going right across a joint in the water pump right there there's a joint that's a joint in the water pump and you have electrical wires just going right across that um the, the the fact that they're rubbing against it with vibration could easily cause chaffing on those wires